on 360 Sport on Trust TV. It's time to talk sports again. This time around, a lot of things we'll be looking at uh, in this uh, uh, hour of the show. Now, I am at Dini Ajishafe. With me in the studio, the usual uh, suspect talking about uh, analysis in the world of sport, talking about the person here. That is uh, Olawale Peter. It's good to have you. Thank you, Mr. Ney. It's a pleasure for me to be here once again. Good one. Now, we look at Nigerian sport. A lot of people see it as just fitness. Some people see it as business. Really, in the world of sport, in the advanced nations, we see sport as business and also as fitness. As you are keeping fit, you also earn money from it. It's time Nigeria should begin to see sport as fitness and business. That slogan is it's not just there to laugh at. It's to make us understand the fact that we have to take sport as real work. It's an employer of labor. A lot of Nigerian youth out there who are into so many social, uh, social vices can be uh, taken into the world of sport. Some are there, some are making money, some are making names, and also earning a living. But we need to see sport as business because a lot of things that we can get sport to do uh, for us. And now we look at the area of facilities. When it comes to a stadium, you look at the stadium, you look at people that are working there. Facility uh, management, uh, their uh, managers rather, are there working, sure, making sure they manage those facilities for sport at the stadium or any other uh, sport facilities you have around you. Well, that's one. And I've never seen whatever you study that you cannot work in sport. Whatever you sport study, even as a linguistic, you can work in sport as a translator. If you are a doctor, you can work with the athletes, players. If you are Whatever you study, anything, think about it or think of it. Whatever you study can also uh, be useful in the world. So that is why sport is a very viable sector that involves everyone. Now, looking at this, our topic for this hour, Nigerian sport. I don't want to say sport. Uh, let me say Nigerian sport. Coming from our own mentality. Is it business or fitness or just fun to keep to do exercise to keep fit the way we see sport here okay um, in the content of nigerian mentality uh, we used to see sport as a business but now it's more like a fun or a fitness not a business and that's the other way other way around on uh, sport on uh, especially the game of football uh, who happens to be the most popular among the sports and activities supposed to be for business, not for fitness. You shouldn't be playing ball because, or you shouldn't be doing sport because you want to have six pack. Mm. You shouldn't be doing that because you want to have good shape. No, you should be doing it because it's for business. And like you rightly put, um, sports supposed to be employer of labor. labor. We have a lot of opportunities to engage the army of unemployed youth we have in this country. Imagine, let's take example of National Stadium in Abuja. If you have sporting activities going on there, do you know the number of people that will be recruited to be keeping that place up and running on a daily basis? Do you know and the number they'll of be people? employed. Yes, they'll be employed to keep the place up and running on daily basis. Yes, yes. Everybody will be trooping there every Saturday to watch a match or to do something, business activities, everything will boom. But we don't have that currently now. Now let's look at Europe, for example. The UEFA Cup that all of us we are so much engrossed with, they are reckoning about $2.8 billion annually. From, from that competition. From that competition. So they, they are seeing it as a business. It can also serve as a form, okay, as a fitness, but the priority should be for business to improve the economy of the nation. We can do that. But we are not really doing it in this country. When we look at sport, it's kind of, man, it's like I'm having my, my stomach is becoming big on daily business. Let me go and Let jog. Me just go and jog, mm. play table tennis, play lawn tennis, go for swimming. It shouldn't be that way. We should refocus our attention or our mentality that the game of sport should be for primarily for business and for fun. Then the issue of fitness can come in because if you are not fit, you can't actually go into the world of 
of sport. So I think we need to we need to do that. And for us to do that, we still have to go back to the grassroots. Mm. That's where, in fact, you are just uh, ahead of me a bit now. Looking at if we are to take sports as business in Nigeria. It means we need to start from the scratch. If you want to build a house, you must get to do a foundation. Now, grassroots sport is a bedrock, is a foundation of every sport that we are. For example, now, if you don't have any sport from the grassroots, uh, federations, associations that will register where the administrators are there to administer, they will not function. Now, what can we do to make Nigerian sport, a better one from the grassroots. What do you think we can do? Okay, um, I think the Minister of <clears throat> Youth and Sports needs to, to change his strategy or his goal or mission or vision or ambition when it comes to sport development in Nigeria. We have to take it from the grassroots. Now, um, I think about a month or two months ago, there was a plan to unveil a 10-year strategic <clears throat> plan master for grassroots plan. master plan for football. Uh, for football, and the person that was appointed, uh, the former Super Eagles uh, player, yeah, one of them opted out. He opted out that this he has done before. Asking him to come back and do this thing, the same issue will repeat itself. So, if a former Super Eagles player doesn't have faith, confidence hmm. in this system, that means there's something wrong. In the in the early nineties, during the time of um, <clears throat> One of the best NFE chairman we had, Omeka Omerua, between 1993 to 1997, you could all see what sport did for us as a country mm. in terms of um, business and development. In fact, it gives us this superiority advantage over our neighboring countries, countries. in Africa. We're talking about during that period, that was when we won the, uh, Nations, Cup. the Nations Cup in 1994. We went to Atlanta 96. We won the gold medal swimming, I jump. We had all this that we participated very, very well because we got this right from the NFF, from the, I mean, sorry, from the NFA then. as at that time. Mm -hmm. So we need to go back to that grassroots. We don't need NFF chairman that will spend two months outside this country looking for players, going to dinners with them. We don't need a coach that he will not stay in this country. I can't remember seeing any of our, <clears throat> I can't remember the last time I saw the Minister of Youth and Sports going to watch any of our local matches or matches. Uh, league games. League games, either the, uh, the basketball, NPFL, the table tennis, handball, any sport. Nothing I've never seen. So if you don't have that commitment from the top, then that means we are still getting it wrong. Mm. So the truth is we have to fall back to the drawing board. We have to start it from the grassroots. And the people at the top, they have to be someone that so much believe that we can really, really do it. We have the likes of everybody. We know what people like that, if given the opportunity, can do to develop the game of, let me say, football, because that's the most popular one when you're talking about sport, what they can do in this country. So until we look at it from that angle, then we'll get it right. If not, we'll see here talking about the same thing. Hmm. Now, we look at the fact that Nigerian sport can only be business and also fitness if we start, uh, actually start it from the grassroots. How can we do this? Number one... We look at the fact that the local government is the closest to the people. And you just have to see that the local government chairman out of there should see sport as a viable means of getting, giving back to the society. Not just to be there. They have to organize competitions. It could be chairman's cup, in table tennis, in volleyball, in football. Any sport you so far like to at least support. A token of amount of money will at least give the, uh, uh, the athletes the chance to come out and compete. You can give a scholarship to the uh, secondary school, primary school, and you see where Nuga Games, Nipuga Games comes in. A lot of talents have been discovered through all these uh, platforms where athletes can compete. And also to let you know that corporate social responsibility, CSR, from companies in Nigeria, both local and international, they need to understand that it is part of the law outside there. In some countries whereby if you are situated in that same country, you give a percentage of money to develop sport. This can be achieved in Nigeria. If you really want to see Nigerian sport as business. Aside that, we can also look at the welfare of athletes. The administrator out there, if there is no athlete, you can never be there as president or, or chairman. 
you need to understand you are there because of these young ones who are competing, sweating it out day in, day out, trying to uh, get their acts together for you to be called the president. If you are there, all you need to do is to make sure you administrate well and give whatever it is to them as their welfare package, not where an athlete will get injure, injured and everybody forgets about that particular athlete. He or she will go back home, take care of themselves on their own uh, expense. And for you, you believe you are the leader. We just have to get things right in this country. If you really want sport to be business and also fitness, we just have to change things. All of us, majority of our Nigerian administrators that goes out of the country, see how they make sport over there as a real business of uh, employing a lot of people there. We can't do the same here. Who says we cannot turn Nigeria around by ourselves? That's a food for thought on this show, talking about Nigeria and taking sport as business and also as fitness. Well, uh, uh, before we digress away from that uh, topic, when it comes to Nigerian sport, the kind of joy, the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of uh, back, back up that Nigerian sport had in the 80s, 50, 60, 80, let's say 50, okay, we're just coming, but 60s, but anything from, anything from 70s, 80s, and 90s, Nigeria really saw sport as a viable means of employing people, of uh, taking off the streets, uh, miscreant, of a little thing, even generating revenue up till the late 90s, before the 2000 era came and everything started changing. Do you think we can at least uh, reorientate ourselves and get things done the way we used to do it then? Yeah, uh, I believe, yes, we can do it. Uh, nothing is impossible to do. But um, we have to start it from the local government, like you said, like you rightly mentioned. <clears throat> I recall then, when we were in the secondary school, we have some dropouts that don't have anything doing. The only thing they do is they go to field in the morning and they have to know to participate in either football, volleyball, even really 4 by 4 inter our sport. We have some local government chairmen that they will register them back to school just for the purpose of that sport. Of that sport so that they can help the school during the entire house sports or during the uh, principal's cup as we call it to, so that they are taking away people away from the streets mm -hmm. and giving them a means of livelihood then we have a lot of people come from outside the country to this our same country nigeria to push and look for young talent ta talent raw talent from secondary school nipoga nuga principal's cup they do that a lot However, the government today have a role to play. They have to provide a conducive environment to do that. Corporate social responsibility, we have to have that also. Those days we have in one year with nationals. Mm. We have uh, Abela BCC, Bates. BCC, Lions of Boko, BCC, all Lions these things. All these things. Most of them have been sponsored by an individual. And so we need that to come back again. I can't remember the last time, even if they say we are playing a match today or there's a competition coming on, that they want to open the gate free for local people. might not even turn people up. May not even turn up because the environment is not even conducive. So the government also, they have a role to play, but they need to see sports as business. It can help them, it can promote their agenda, and it can promote, um, it can bring up the economy of the country also. So you should look at it in that way. Corporate social responsibility. Uh, I think DSTV, they are the ones sponsoring the South African League. And I think as of last year, they paid about 600 million rand to support that, to support league. that league. That's about 15 billion naira. Hmm. So how much are they contributing to the development of sports in this country, Nigeria? Hmm. Are we holding them accountable? Do you know the number of people that, that subscribe to DSTV in this country? What are they giving back to the society? What about him to him? So we need to go back to the drawing board and see how to hold these people accountable when it comes to social responsibility. They are taken from us as a Nigerian. Then they should give back to the society also. Not that they should select some few people that they are giving back to. No, it should go mm. around. To everybody, so I think if we start, I mean, by, by that, we may get it, we may get it right because we have abundance of talent. Do you know what they call Elijah in Lagos? Mm, yeah, 
those people, those boys, if you train them and take them to Olympic, they will win gold medal for you in swimming. Mm. They will win gold medal for you in swimming. Let's go to Ajegunle, mm. Asia City. Let's have a, a, a standard stadium that can take all sporting activities. Bash Ali came from there. We still have a lot, a lot of boxers in that same Asia City. What they need is exposure, training, support, so that we can bring them to the limelight. So that's what we need. I think we can get it right, but the government, the corporate uh, bodies, uh, bodies uh, yeah. we all need to come together and see sports as a business. Mm. Then from there, fun. Then from there, fitness. Not because of six pack. Mm. But because yeah. you just have to make business as uh, sport as business. Yeah, you have now, to. looking at the fact that the reason why we mention local government chairmen is because they are the closest to the people, talking about the local areas. Uh, state government, federal government cannot do this alone. The uh, local government chairman needs to see sport as a viable means of turning things around. You can even make a name for yourself by, bring, by building just a small basketball court in that particular town, a small handball court in that village, where you notice that the children or the youth there likes to play it. Give them that particular sport that you notice that they are into. Before you know it, your name will be written in gold. We've been talking concerning Nigerian sports as fitness or as business, and we've been giving outlines of how we can turn things around in this country. Sport, as they say, economically, the sport economist came up with the idea that Nigeria can actually earn about 25 billion naira from sport, if well earned, so to say. If we well earned, that is, if we do it right, it can be done. A lot of money goes into sport in international level, national level, local level, and even state level. Now, let's leave that particular issue because it's a big and deep issue that we'll be looking into in our subsequent edition. Now, let's digress and move to other stories trending. This time around, we go to FIFA. FIFA Club World Cup will be coming up in February, February 12th to 12th, 2022. FIFA, FIFA actually came up with the draws that was made on Monday, and now we have uh, those um, uh, teams that will be playing for you. The Al Jazeera, Auckland City of uh, New Zealand is there. Al Ali, Al Ali of Egypt, uh, CF Montere. You have Al Hilal. You also have Cel Palmeiras. And not forgetting Chelsea, the champions of Europe. Uh, they will be participating in that particular competition. Now, looking at the way it will be in the first round, FIFA Club World Cup uh, that will be coming up in UAE. Al Jazeera will be facing Auckland City. Uh, Al Ali will play against Monterrey. Al Hilal will face Al Jazeera. Uh, the, the winner of Al Jazeera and Auckland uh, City will be facing Al Hilal, while Sal Palmeira will be facing the winner of March 2. While March 6 will be between uh, Chelsea and whoever win from March 3. Well, these are the fixtures that will be coming up as you'll be looking at them. Uh, all the countries, uh, sorry, the clubs that will be playing uh, in this competition, Al, Al Jazeera, Al Ali, Monterrey, Auckland, and not forgetting uh, Chelsea and Sel Palmeiras from the CONCACAF region, from the South America. The, the way it is right now, I think uh, a lot of people, will, uh, the favorite here is already uh, known. A lot of people will be looking at, oh, it's going to be between Sel Palmeiras and Chelsea. Okay, and it's all about what we are used to and the names and the clubs that we are used to. Mm. Some of these other clubs, they, they are, are not, very good. They are not underdog. Mm. They are very good. And the problem is you've never played with them before, so you don't know their pattern, you don't know their, their style. style. So definitely they will come with a surprise. So as far as I'm concerned, it's anybody's game. Mm. It's not about, oh, Chelsea, champion no, of the world. No, it's going to be a very interesting match to watch come February next year. Mm, February 12th, that will be coming up in UAE, United Arab Emirates, where all these three clubs will file out in the FIFA Club World Cup. Who will win that competition? Well, the team knows themselves when they perform better when it comes to football. Now we move away from that story. Now let's talk about another one trending where it has been confirmed that Malang Sa, a player of Chelsea, is being uh, wanted by Inter Milan. Inter Milan are looking at getting this player well, right now, it's not really fine easy uh, since he moves to Chelsea. His time is uh, limited. He has a, uh, a limited time playing for that team. The guy that looks so much like Kante. Okay, uh, I think the best thing for Malag this time around is to move away from Chelsea to mm. get more playing time. Because if you look at the Chelsea defence right now, who can he bench? 
Mm. Sincerely, where does it come in? It doesn't fit in. I think he has played about two or three matches so far this season for Chelsea. Since he joined Chelsea, rather. He went on loan before he came back. So the best thing for him is to go on loan. And Inter, they are even looking at signing him on permanent basis after the, after the loan. I think it's going to be a very good one for him. However, I would suggest to the Chelsea not to sell him. Let him go on loan, get the experience, get the maturity. And our, uh, the, the captain of Chelsea, that was an uh, applicator, I think his contract is expiring June next year. And he's not willing, not mm. ready to stay. to stay or to renew. There has been a rumor that Xavi wanted him to In come Barcelona. to Barcelona. So if that's the situation, you need someone to replace in one way. And that person should be Malang Sa. Should be Malang Sa. It's, it's already part of the team. So I think the best thing for him, for now, let him go on loan. Mm. Let him go and try his luck somewhere. Let him go and get the playing time, the experience, and the exposure that he needs as a defender. I, I, I can cite the case of Mo Salah. When he was with, uh, was it Chelsea now? Or, uh, uh, sorry. You know, he came and they had to sell it back. Chelsea. Chelsea. And uh, I'm sure the rest is history, as they say, because I'm sure they will be like, if we had known that Salah would become this kind of player, we wouldn't have sold him. You understand? And look at Kevin De Bruyne when he was also playing football. Uh, it was it was like, oh, this guy is not going to go back. Before you know it, look at Manchester City today. De Bruyne is a household name. Yeah. So it happens like that. Yeah, uh, Malangsa, if he's loaned out, according to your theory now, if he's loaned out on a club, they should not sell him outrightly. Yeah, okay. They should loan him out, let him get more experience, and then bring him back. If Aspiqueta is leaving that club. And even if he's not leaving, let's, I think that should be a backup, just in case. And Malangsa, to me, I think he's a good player. It's just that, you know. Yeah, he's a good player. Unfortunately, it's like you are a good, you are a good player during the Messi and Ronaldo era. You won't, you won't have that shine at all. It's, it's, it's just the grace of God that made uh, Luka Modric in 2018 to break in between the in fact, I would say it was the World Cup. Yes, the World Cup because they came second. Mm. You know, they lost the final to, uh, to France. France. You, you know, so that's the reason why. He came and he helped uh, Real Madrid also to win the Champions, Champions League, League during, that, uh, during that year. So I think the best thing for him is just to go out there, but on loan. Then also, uh, Rudiger also is contemplating of leaving Chelsea. So uh, he's thinking of going to Bundesliga or going to even Real Madrid. So it's not yet certain, sure, if he wants to leave or not. So you shouldn't just let a good player, a promising player like Sa, to go. We are not in, 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 in distress. So if you are so, in distress, that probably you need money. You cannot look at, oh, let's sell. They, just can, we can let this sell, player let's go. Let's sell him and get him the money. You are not in distress at all. You are doing very well financially. So just let him go on loan. Get some experience. Time, get experience. And then you bring him back when the time comes. Or you mm. review what happened next year by June. If probably you need someone to come in or you don't need anybody to come out. So uh, after all, if, if you don't want the, uh, the player to stay with you, you can still get others, but at least keep him aside. Sure. So that any time, who knows, maybe you go and let the, the Nigerian uh, parlance, <laughs> let him go and blow somewhere, and sure. then you can bring him back to your mm -hmm. club. After all, we just cited the Kevin De Bruyne, Mo Salah, and other players have uh, turned things around after they were loaned or sold out outrightly. Well, we've been talking about Malang Sa. A player that plays for Chelsea, that Inter Milan, the Nerazzurris, are uh, they actually interested in signing him, and it's possible that this player will want to jump the gun and move straight to that team because of the playing time. He's having a shorter one uh, over there in Chelsea. Uh, he's not being given the chance, and he might just want to at least uh, see if that opportunity will be able to be the one he will need to look into. Now, let's take another story. Now, uh, rather, he's talking about a particular man. Talking about Nuno Espirito Santo, who was uh, with Tottenham or Spur, with Vamsin Wanderers, now he was sacked uh, in Tottenham or Spur. As it is, he says he's looking at coming uh, back to the EPL. Though news came out that this man could be uh, going to France to be a manager. But as it is right now, well, he wants to come back to English Premier League. At least he's used to the place. He's been with Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's been with Tottenham or Spur, and he would prefer to be there instead of going to France. I won't blame him. Mm. <laughs> I won't blame him at all. Everybody wants to play in the best in the best league, and the best league right now, where we have the best players, the best coaches, is Premiership. So I won't blame him. Even he has offered to go to Leon, okay, but his focus is to remain in Premiership. 
where in premiership? That's the question. Mm. Okay, there are some clubs that at least if 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 you cannot take the big the big ones, you understand the the, the top eight. It is getting to top ten very soon. So at least you can take the the bottom ten. Yeah, I, I think that would be the best thing for him because he needs to go to where and um, he's not going to be under pressure. Let's look at uh, David Moyes, for example. When he was in Everton, he doesn't have that pressure on him. But when mm. he got to Manchester United, you can see what happened. Now he's back at West Ham. He took them from the relegation zone. Look at what they are doing very well. Nuno also is a very good coach, mm. sincerely. But it's just unfortunate the way things happened. Things happen. went somehow there. Yeah. Mm. He was named the manager of uh, the Premier League for the month of August. They beat Man City. One nil. He won at least about four, five matches from the 10 matches he played. But still started going, he lost to Chelsea, lost to Arsenal, and the four new defeats in the hands of Manchester United, just seal it. And we all know Tottenham for whom they are also. And they are more like Arsenal. If they are losing, but they are playing the attacking football, they won't have a problem. But Nuno is known for being too defensive-minded, defensive-attacking-minded. He likes to, okay, let me try and save whatever I can save. I have a counter-attack. Let me utilize this. And the Tottenham, they don't want that. They had that problem with Mario also. Mm. So they want attacking style. style. So and he couldn't give them that. So and so unfortunate he left. But he's a good coach and he has the opportunity. But I think it should be better it would be better for him. Let him go to the bottom and start. Teams. Okay, and well our time is off. We really want to appreciate your time with us in the studio. Pleasure is mine. Good one there, Talking Sports on 360 uh, Sport on Trust TV. It's been with uh, Peter Solawale and I am Adeni Adisha. Thanks for watching.